right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Liz Roberts, and I'm the CEO of Safe Horizon, the nation's largest and leading victim services agency. Every year at Safe Horizon, we help a quarter of a million New Yorkers find support, safety, hope, and connection after experiencing uh, some form of crime or abuse. And we're here today for one collective reason, to stand in support of survivors of sexual assault and to urge Albany to do right by them and pass the Adult Survivors Act without any delay. At Safe Horizon, we believe that every survivor has the right to pursue justice in the way that is best for them. And we believe that it's our responsibility as a society to offer many different tools and pathways to justice. We believe that accountability for every person who causes harm, no matter how powerful that person is, is vitally important. And we know firsthand that um, painfully, many survivors don't um, ever see the person who harmed them held accountable. The reality is that many survivors need years or decades before they are ready to come forward. Some survivors might need that time to process their trauma. Others might fear they will lose their livelihood if they come forward. And others simply fear that no one will believe them and not without cause. Some do come forward, but find that our legal system just won't help them or doesn't help them. And when their abuser is somebody who is seen as powerful um, or who has power over the survivor specifically, these barriers become even more formidable. That means that the first time that many survivors disclose, they are already outside of the statute of limitations and those survivors need more time. Albany has already recognized that our state statute of limitations did not reflect the reality of trauma and that it left many survivors with no recourse to justice. Last year, state lawmakers extended the statute of limitations going forward for people who are sexually abused or assaulted as adults. And now we need to ensure that those who have already been harmed have a chance to access justice too. Even some survivors who came forward quickly and tried to pursue justice in the courts have been shut out due to no fault of their own. The Adult Survivors Act would give all of these survivors that chance by opening up a one year window when anyone who was sexually abused or assaulted could file a civil claim against their abuser or against an institution that failed to stop the abuse. We know this model works. For years, Safe Horizon advocated for a similar window for adults who experienced sexual abuse when they were children. That window, which opened in the summer of 2019 and was extended because of the pandemic to mid-August of this year, has allowed nearly 5,000 civil cases to be filed throughout the state. But that law only applies to those abused as children. We need similar legislation for adults because those who experienced adult abuse as adults deserve that same chance. Lawmakers in Albany have the power to create this crucial path to justice for survivors. Please join me in urging the leadership of the State Assembly and State Senate to pass the Adult Survivors Act without delay. And now I am delighted to introduce Evelyn Yang, a survivor and powerful advocate. Thank you, Liz. Hello, my name is Evelyn Yang. I'm here today as a survivor of sexual assault to urge the passing of the Adult Survivors Act. In 2012, I was sexually assaulted by my OBGYN, Dr. Robert Haddon. At first, I thought I was alone, but it turned out that he was abusing dozens, maybe hundreds of women and girls over several decades. How many of these women and girls also believed they were alone in their abuse? My guess is all of them. They all thought they were alone. And so they thought that if they said something, no one would believe them. This is exactly what happens when your abuser is a master predator, someone of authority, someone who you trusted. What we acknowledge when we pass the Child Victims Act is that the most vulnerable survivors need more time to come forward with their abuse, but you don't have to be a child to fit that category. When these survivors come forward, we cannot turn them away. 
we can't say, sorry, you're too late. This is trauma upon trauma, and it's more blame on the victim. The Adult Survivors Act would not benefit me directly, but I stand today with fellow survivors in support of this legislation because I believe that all survivors deserve a path to justice. All survivors deserve a chance to be heard, to just have their case acknowledged, including the patients abused by my doctor 10 years ago. We did not have a choice in getting assaulted, but we should have the choice to try and hold our abusers accountable. We like to say it's never too late to speak up. Let's make that true. Thank you. Evelyn, thank you so much for those inspiring words and for your courage and leadership in this fight. I now invite Bob Druger, who will share how all survivors deserve what the Adult Survivors Act will provide. Um, Bob, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Bob, are you able to unmute your... There we go, okay. Yeah. I am here today because I was a victim of a serial sexual predator as a teenager and young man. It happened almost 40 years ago, but I told no one until recently. Mm -hmm. Because I was under 18 when it started, and because of the recently passed New York Child Victims Act, I have been given a voice to do something about this. I have reached out to as many victims of this predator as I've been able to. As I did so, excuse me, I learned I was not alone, far from it. There are not just a few victims of this predator, but hundreds, over 50 years and two countries. I've communicated with, excuse me, with many. All have a similar story. Each has reacted differently, some successful, some very successful, some with broken lives, some that even committed suicide. Most of these victims were over 18 when, when the incident occurred and have no recourse. In all of this, the first priority should be the victims. Yet I have found this is not the case. These are crimes that affect someone their entire life. Yet they're most often unspoken. In most states, Laws with absurd statutes of limitations limit and intimidate victims from coming forward. There are also age restrictions that just don't make sense. In most states, a child of sexual crime is under 18. But is there really a difference between 17 or 18 or 16 or 20 for crimes that affect a victim for a lifetime? Finding any victim who will come forward is difficult enough but the follow-up to stop these predators and being able to do something about it is even more difficult. It gives no motivation to come forward. I will end with a, with a single thought. Do not let these evil sexual predators get away with it. I urge the Albany lawmakers to pass the Adult Survivors Act and give thousands of survivors power. By not doing so, the power is left in the hands of these evil predators. Thank you, and sorry for the tears. Bob, thank you so much, and please don't apologize uh, for the emotion, and I just want to say you're right, you're not alone, and we are all here with you. Now I want to turn it over to Robert Bender, who has a similar story, but with an important difference. Good morning, and thank you for inviting me to participate, and um, I feel honored to be able to contribute to anything that will help um, myself and other other uh, victims through the ASA Act. Um, uh, I, I I suffered uh, with this under the same perpetrator as, as Bob Druger, and um, we've had the we've been fortunate to be able to be in touch. Um, we uh, just a group of it's up it's a, it's a, an ever expanding group it's up to about 30 people now 
uh, of this person's um, victims. And uh, I, at my university, um, I had just turned 18 a couple months prior when I met this person um, where I had this uh, terrible experience. And this is similar to Bob. It was almost 40 years ago, but it's been like sort of like this dark cloud in my life that I've been um, ashamed and um, felt so ashamed. It's been like my dark secret and I've only told my wife about this. And he kind of counted on the fact that, um, you know, he was homosexual and he, I think he primarily picked on heterosexual men that were kind of confused, like what's, you know, what am I? And um, I think some of the younger men, I think were even more deeply traumatized because I think, I think men would begin to question who they were, uh, question their own sexuality. Um, and so I just really think it's a mistake to say or believe that just because you turn 18, then all of a sudden you have the sophistication and um, the wherewithal to kind of defend yourself against, as Evelyn was saying, like, you know, these uh, professional abusers. Um, and this person was an Olympian athlete and used all a variety of things to um, uh, kind of contort the minds of the people that were looked up to him and held him in great esteem. So, uh, uh, yeah, so like I said, this has just been um, a, a terrible burden to have to keep this a secret. And I, I just like, I remember thinking like 30 years ago, boy, I guess that's it. You know, it's been like 10 years. I'm sure there's a statute of limitations. There's nothing I can do about it. And so uh, it gives me great hope um, that so many years later that there's a chance that maybe there, there will be something that um, myself and other people can do about it. So that's, that's my hope and my hope for a lot of people that I know have suffered to a, a great degree and it's tremendously affected the tra trajectory of their lives. I know I'm echoing a lot of what Bob said, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a similar story. Thank you. Thank you so much, Robert. And I just want to, uh, you know, really echo what you said about the burden that survivors carry when um, when they're asked to keep a, a painful secret like this one, and the hope that many survivors feel that this law actually can be passed um, in this session, um, so that so that you all have a pathway to justice. The unfairness of this law couldn't be more clear. I'm now pleased to welcome Marissa Hochstetter, another powerful advocate and survivor. Good morning. Thank you, Liz and um, Robert and Bob. Your story and sharing means a lot to me. Um, and you know, you've heard from Evelyn, but we share that sort of odd bond that that happens when you come forward and you learn you're not alone, and you meet um, other people who've had. Um, the same experience as you. And it's it's really powerful um, to find each other. And I think we are using our voices and hopefully, you know, inspiring other people um, too. Um, as Evelyn shared, uh, for more than 20 years, Robert had in um, sexually assaulted patients as an OBGYN at Columbia University, New York Presbyterian Hospital. Nearly 200 women have stepped forward to report his abuse. And it's clear that he was a prolific predator who really indiscriminately preyed on women, women like me, women like Evelyn, women like a 15 and 16 year old who were visiting the gynecologist for the first time, one who he himself had delivered as a baby, women like a 23 year old, a 31 year old, a 42 year old, a 63 year old and a 70 year old. No matter what our age at the time of our assault, every victim deserves to be heard regardless of unfairly short statutes of limitation, regardless of whether the police believe you, regardless of whether a prosecutor chooses to fight for you. We all deserve to be heard. Far too often abusers and enabling institutions lack the moral courage to do what is right and commit to meaningful change. Instead, they deceive and evade taking responsibility for the harm they caused. 
It is time for our law to come in line with our modern understanding of sexual violence so that we can root it out where it has been allowed to fester. Being able to pursue justice in the civil courts does not mean that we will win. It simply means we have a, a chance to be heard and to have due process. And I believe everyone deserves that. By passing the Adult Survivors Act this session, the state has a chance to show survivors that we matter and that we deserve justice. Maybe then we will begin to heal and address this incredibly widespread problem. Thank you. Marissa, thank you so much. And as you say, we all deserve to be heard. Now, please welcome Amber Batiliana Gutierrez, um, another courageous survivor who has been an advocate in this fight. Liz, um, yeah, I just want to say it's almost a year that Harvey Weinstein is in jail at this time. And um, I wanted to tell a little bit of, of my story because um, I'm so happy about that. But back in 2015, I basically went to the police after an hour that he assaulted me in his office. After I accepted to go to a casting to, to see this person that I never seen before. And like, I didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. um, what I did was collaborating with the police. I wore a wire to get him to uh, say what he did and admit his fault. And, um, and the Man Manhattan district attorney didn't do anything anyway. And uh, for how much I'm happy to see that he's in jail, I'm still mad to know that I didn't get my justice because I was pretty much the first person to talk about him and what he did because I felt deep down that he was doing that to many other people. And so as much as I couldn't do anything before, I really now hope to push the Dual Survivors Act because I um, am outside the statute of limitation, but still I want to make justice for myself and for many other women that I know he assaulted after I came forward. And um, so well, I was 22 years old uh, at the time that he assaulted me and uh, I was legally an adult, but I was so young. I was an immigrant and I was alone. So, I mean, I couldn't do more than what I did, but I feel that right now with the support of everybody, even here and Safe Horizon, I could at least get the justice that made me lose many years of my life because everything was public and I couldn't, you know, continue with my dreams and, and do my life. So I really am asking to pass the Adult Survivors Act because some victims tried their best, but still they couldn't do anything. Amber, thank you so much for um, your courage and um, for all that you have done to move this conversation forward. These survivors have offered such compelling testimony for why Albany needs to act now on the Adult Survivors Act. Thankfully, we have some excellent legislators fighting hard for survivors. And I'd like to welcome one of them now, Senator Hoyleman, a great friend to survivors and a sponsor of the Adult Survivors Act. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Uh, and thank you to everyone. Uh, Safe Horizon and uh, your organizing ability is really important to uh, Assemblywoman Rosenthal and I to get this bill across um, the finish line. Um, and I just want to say on a personal level, the stories are so moving and powerful, and I know how much it requires of each of you to retell them time and time again. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll say that uh, my colleagues uh, listen to them and it does help us move this legislation. So thank you for your personal sacrifice on that level 
in order to help others. And it really is a, a, a noble uh, effort on your part. Um, you know, thanks to you and other survivor advocates uh, in New York, uh, along with uh, uh, Assemblywoman Rosenthal and her championing in the uh, assembly, uh, we were able to take this significant step forward and uh, overhauling our sexual harassment laws in 2019. And uh, of course, we passed the Child Victims Act, which to date, as was said, has given over 5,300 survivors of child sexual abuse a shot at justice to hold their abusers and their abusers enablers accountable. And we also passed legislation in 2019 to prospectively <clears throat> increase the criminal and civil statutes of limitations for sex crimes committed against adults. Despite that progress though, uh, we have to acknowledge that for decades, our justice system has failed the survivors of sexual assault. And stories like those of the brave survivors today are why uh, I introduced the Adult Survivors Act with Assemblywoman Rosenthal to ensure that time barred sexual assault survivors who were failed by New York's inadequate statute of limitations have their day in court, have their voice that, that you have so um, powerfully uh, reminded us. Uh, until 2019, New York statute of limitations for civil lawsuits arising out of sex crimes was prohibitively short for adult survivors. In most cases, survivors only had one year, one year to sue their abusers directly for an intentional tort or three years to sue for negligence. The Adult Survivors Act would provide a one year window for otherwise expired civil claims arising out of sex crimes to be filed by survivors against their abusers and those who enabled them, whether the abuser was a family member, an intimate partner, an employer, a doctor, or even an elected official at the highest levels of government. I just wanna say that I stand with everyone here today. I will always stand with you as we push for a more equitable and just system of laws to protect survivors of these horrific crimes. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. I am hopeful as we enter this spring and become uh, uh, more open in our uh, legislative process with vaccinations, that this is a, a moment of um, rebirth uh, for uh, this effort as we push after this budget uh, to get this legislation passed. So I just wanna thank everyone um, for their words today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Senator Hoyleman. We are so uh, appreciative of your leadership and the way you consistently stand with survivors. We're also grateful for the support of our next speaker, a fierce advocate for survivors and another of the bill's sponsors, Assemblymember Rosenthal. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Liz. Uh, thank you, Safe Horizon. Thank you. Um, brave and courageous and selfless uh, survivors here with us today because you are sharing your pain. And I know it does some measure of good for yourselves, but it also opens up the eyes of New Yorkers to the pain that others are suffering as well and continue to suffer um, in silence. And that's why Senator Hoyleman and I are dedicated to passing the Adult Survivors Act this year in Albany. Uh, as he said, we paired together and after 13 long years of waging a battle to pass the Child Victims Act in Albany, we got it done. And then we extended the look back window by another year, even in the midst of a pandemic. So I think uh, you can be proud of your sponsors because we are totally committed to you and totally committed to letting your stories lead the way in educating people, in fighting those who would oppose this legislation. And we know there are opponents out there with deep pockets and deep access. Uh, but we will win this fight. Um, since the Child Victims Act window was open and extended, more than 5,000 people have availed themselves of the opportunity 
to pursue justice. And that's what we're saying. You don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to hide because we are going to ensure that the law sees you. We will ensure that justice that has turned a blind eye to your pain will be there for you. And we will ensure that those who committed these vile acts, those who violated you and the institutions that protected them will no longer go free because that is what justice looks like in 2021, even if it has been remiss um, over the years. Um, as Liz said, it takes a long time for many people to come to terms with what has happened to them. And you can see Ambra and Bob and Robert, how, and Evelyn, how painful it still is for them. Some people can choose to come out right away and say, look what happened to me. But the majority of people cannot do that. I can't imagine if that happened to some of my friends that they would have the fortitude to do it. And that's why we need a look back window. Because when you're 18 and this happens to you, you don't, your whole world is turned upside down. And so we need to acknowledge that. We need to acknowledge how trauma takes a long time to deal with. And we need to say that our justice system has to be available when survivors are ready to come forward. And that is the whole goal of the Adult Survivors Act. We will not let people who are victims of sexual harassment, sexual abuse, sexual violence be treated like any other crime victim because you are special. Your lives have been upended in a way that's different from most. And you deserve the time and you deserve the opportunity to go back at this point by one, one year time period to, um, to seek justice. Um, as Marissa opened up, it's still painful, but you are all not alone. You have Brad and me for sure, and we will ensure that you have the rest of the legislature with you and we will pass this for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Assembly Member Rosenthal. And you did such a beautiful job of talking about the unique dynamics of sexual assault and sexual abuse and the, the important reality that our justice system needs to be there for survivors when they are ready to come forward and not to impose artificial limits on that. Thank you so much. Now I'd like to welcome Sarah Ziff, founder and executive director of the Model Alliance. Thank you for being with us today, Sarah. Thank you so much, Liz, and thank you everyone for being here today. Um, my name is Sarah Ziff, and I'm the founder and executive director of the Model Alliance. Uh, the Model Alliance is a New York-based advocacy organization for labor rights in the fashion industry. And uh, we believe that everyone who works for a living deserves safety, dignity, and respect on the job. Uh, the Model Alliance strongly supports the Adult Survivors Act, which would create a one-year window to allow adult survivors of sexual assault who aged out of the statute of limitations to file a civil lawsuit against the, their abuser and, where applicable, the institution that failed to stop the abuse. Um, fashion models are often young, female, immigrant, and vulnerable. Uh, sexual assault and um, harassment are pervasive in the modeling industry. So many of us, myself included, have uh, experienced sexual violence on the job. Uh, and our organization runs a support line, which in light of the Me Too and Time's Up movements, uh, received a significant increase in calls regarding these issues. Many survivors in our community <clears throat> are adults who took years, even decades to report their abuse. This could be due to deep trauma, uh, an industry culture that normalized the abuse, um, a fear of retaliation, or likely a combination of all of the above. Um, in case after case, we've heard from individuals who are now time barred from filing civil lawsuits, and the Adult Survivors Act would create a look back window for them to seek justice by giving them the opportunity to hold their abusers 
accountable in a court of law. Um, in other cases, sexual assault survivors in our community turned to law enforcement and prosecutors in a timely manner, but they were denied the chance to seek justice. Um, this is precisely what happened in um, Ambra's case, as you just heard her mention. Ambra um, and countless others at the Model Alliance need the Adult Survivors Act to correct a system which has historically favored rich, powerful men over the women who they abuse. They deserve a chance to bring a civil lawsuit when the criminal justice system failed them. Um, so in closing, we are very proud to support the Adult Survivors Act and we urge the legislator, legislature to pass this bill as soon as possible. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Sarah. And as you say, everybody deserves the right to, to be safe and feel safe in their workplace. I'm now so pleased to welcome Lourdes Rosa Carrasquillo, Director of Advocacy at the Center for Independence for the Disabled. Lourdes. Thank you, I just got unmuted. Okay, so the Center for Independence of the Disabled in New York is focused that everybody can be independent and live their life. And although people with disabilities will be affected every way, everyone has spoken here, powerful experiences, there, a lot of times it mostly happens with healthcare providers because they have to go to this provider. He's a specialist that only treats their disability. So here you are trusting that you're going to help me get better. And obviously you ended up heart causing more harm. And the Adult, Adult Survivors Act to me is the step that helps someone become a survivor because until they can speak and they can be there, they will constantly feel like a victim because it's not being addressed. And I think this is a powerful, powerful act. And I thank the Assemblywoman and the Senator because you're always there for us. And uh, people with disabilities just often aren't heard even when we do have the statute of limitation. But the point is that this will help them think, all right, I can hold them accountable and move forward. But until they can hold them accountable, they are living as a victim because there's, there's no voice. And so again, thank you. Thank you for the powerful experiences people are sharing. That's very difficult, but very powerful. And this will help others who maybe still are victims say, you know, if they were able to do it, maybe I can, you know, because it's the stuff of not just speaking out, it's always to, to go. I mean, some of you have mentioned you went to the precinct and all, and for people with disabilities, they, they have issues of never being believed already if they have a mental health issue or what have you. So just hearing these experiences for them, it's going to be very powerful. So I thank you all and thank you, Safe Horizon, for being such a powerful leader. Lourdes, thank you so much for being here with us today. And uh, your perspective is so important um, because we know that abusers prey on um, people who are vulnerable and disabilities are often a factor that make individuals vulnerable to this kind of abuse and assault. I next want to uh, welcome Ilsa Necht, Director of Policy and Advocacy for the Joyful Heart Foundation, which has been a powerful voice for survivors of sexual assault in so many ways. Welcome, Ilsa. Thank you very much. Um, uh, my name is Ilsa Connect. I'm the Policy and Advocacy Director for the Joyful Heart Foundation. Uh, we were founded by Law and Order SVU actress Mariska Hargitay to help survivors heal and reclaim joy in their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I want to thank the survivors that have spoken today um, for sharing their truth and tell you very strongly from, from me um, and our founder that what happened to you matters and, and that you matter. Um, and thank you um, so much for um, participating and, and, and all of your efforts. Um, it's difficult for sure. Um, and I'll just be brief. We, you know, we're here to stand with our partners to get this done. Um, this is so crucial. You've heard that so much from, from everybody speaking today. Um, you know, we, we just want to send a strong message to Albany that um, survivors de deserve no less, and this is the time to make this happen. So whatever we can do to work um, with this amazing group, we will do. So thank you so much for having me.
Thank you so much, Ilsa. And thank you all so much for coming today. I'm so grateful to the courageous survivors, the fierce advocates, and um, our wonderful legislators who are leading this fight. Together, I know we can make this happen, and I hope Albany is listening. And now we're going to take some questions from members of the media who have joined us, and uh, Katie will be moderating those questions. Sure. Uh, please drop questions in the chat, and we will call on you and unmute you. All right, we're gonna give people one more minute. Um, and then I think we can wrap if uh, no one has any questions. Okay, I think we are fine to wrap, Liz, if you'd like to hand it. Great, I wanna thank everybody who spoke today, everybody who joined us. Um, if you have follow-up questions, please reach out to Katie at pythiapublic.com. Her email address is in the chat. And um, this fight is um, in some ways just beginning for this year, um, but we can bring it home this year and that's what we aim to do. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.